Hey everybody, this is Mark with Circle of Dark Mother. Um, I have Richard and some attendees here um, ready to talk about the eight spheres. Um, if you're new to us, this is Circle of the Dark Mother. Uh, we do a bunch of different occult topics, Lilith being one of the biggest because I'm a Lilith devotee and I write about Lilith, but we do other topics as well, which the eight spheres is Lilith adjacent, but not specifically about her. Um, we do meet right now the first Sunday of every month at 6.30 p.m. Uh, what we're looking at for next year is probably 7 p.m. the first Sunday of every month. Although we typically do not do a, a meeting in January because of the fact that uh, the first Sunday is, is very often very close to Christmas and New Year. So we usually skip that one. Um, if you are not um, aware of our YouTube channel, if you go to our um, 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 webpage, you can get to our YouTube YouTube. And I will type that into the chat. And it is circulusmatrum.com, uh, which is Latin from um, Circle of the Mother and Circle of the Dark Mother. Uh, but I tried to make it short so people could actually get to the URL. So let's dive in. So we're going to talk today about the eight spheres and what those are and what the relevance is and how you can learn more. Um, and Richard, if you have any because you've studied these, any thoughts, you can jump in any time. Yeah, I'd be glad to once you once you share information. Um, I, you know, there's a lot of different things to, to go through with this. So look forward to what you have to share. And I'll, I'll add afterwards if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. So the first question, of course, is what are the eight spheres? And the eight spheres are really correspondences to a number of things. Um, it's a it's an area of study, and I'll talk more about that in a minute, but it corresponds to a bunch of things. So first of all, the eight spheres correspond to the lowest seven spheres of Kabbalah, along with then one for the supernal realm. In, if you're familiar with Kabbalah, there's 10 spheres, but we took this course that we put together and brought it down to eight. The reason is it's sort of an intro to a number of things, Kabbalah being one of them, but it is um, the supernal spheres are always the ones that are the hardest. So we combined it into one to make it a little bit um, easier to navigate. So so some of the correspondences I said are the seven lower spheres of the tree of life, plus one for the supernal realm, the eight rungs of the Mesopotamian ladder of lights. And if you've been watching the YouTube channel at all, I'm going through those right now. The Mesopotamian ladder of lights is definitely pre-Kabbalah. It's what later got brought into Judaism, uh, mixed with their Merkava mysticism, and turned into what we know of as Kabbalah. But there are eight rungs to the Ladder of Lights, and it really corresponds directly to the seven lower spheres of Kabbalah plus the supernal. Um, we also have the shadow of the um, ten spheres of Klifoth, again down to eight, so seven plus the supernal. But you can look at these as the Klifoth or the husks of darkness, as well as the bright tree. It does cover eight archetypical aspects of deity, eight archetypical types of angelic beings, the building blocks of meditation and ritual. It also corresponds to the seven internal energy centers, or what in East is called chakras, plus the supernal one, the eight sabbats of pagan tradition all fit to this, and of course, the eight major heavenly bodies of classical astronomy. You know, up until a certain point, we didn't know about the planets beyond Saturn. But Earth, Moon, Sun, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn are all correspondent to these, which they correspond also to eight of the spheres of Kabbalah and all eight rungs of the Mesopotamian Ladder of Lights. So there's literally a one-to-one -one correspondence between these. So why work with the eight spheres? Um, so by studying the eight spheres, you gain the following. You get to understand um, something of Kabbalah without diving deep into Hebrew. Um, and this is important because I know when I first studied Kabbalah, I am not a linguist. I took one um, course in, in high school on a language and bombed it. <laughs> I, I, I'm not a 
quick meta, I mean, a memorizer. So the problem is I have to understand something before I can really memorize. So what we did is for the first, this class, this eight spheres, we actually took out the Hebrew words. Um, if you then go into later courses that we have, uh, and this is free, by the way, I want to put that out there before we go any further. I'm not doing a sales job. Um, but when you do this, you don't have to know any Hebrew and it really helps to get the concepts. So when you do move on, if you want to learn more about Kabbalah, the Ladder of Lights or the Klippoth, you don't have to have the languages under your belt. Um, you'll get the concepts here and then the language can come as you're studying further. It's also a step-by-step -step experiential guide to working with the energies of these spheres, which these energies are deity, they are angelic presences, they are meditative practices. So all of this energy is, is explained and worked through in this course. Um, it also takes you through the building of an altar and doing ceremony. Now, this is a particular paradigm because it was built based on Kabbalistic um, altars and ceremony. That doesn't mean that if you do yours differently, that you have to throw it away to do what's in here. But this will give you ideas of correspondences between the spheres, your your altar implements, ceremony, that you can carry over to any tradition you do. It doesn't have to stick to any kind of Kabbalistic paradigm. And in fact, um, when I, I go a little further, one of the things we do here too is we don't use the Judeo-Christian paradigm for these eight spheres, we actually use the Greco-Roman deities. And the reason is, is because we know some people have been um, hurt by some churches, maybe don't really feel much like the patriarchal stuff that is associated. Now, Kabbalah is not really like that, but getting into it, one can get a little bit um, caught off guard because of some of the, the the stuff maybe from our pasts. And we use Greco-Roman. I don't work personally with Greco-Roman deities most of the time, but we use those because almost everyone has had some experience of Greco-Roman mythology. Even if it's through Disney, you've, you've seen something about Greco-Roman tradition. And that's why we use it because it's very relatable. Um, it'll give you additional ideas for holding any kind of um, holy days, sabbats, rituals, anything like that. And it's a better understanding of information and energy that goes into all the world's scriptures. Um, what I, I, I have a, a master's in, in um, theology, and I've studied a lot of different world scriptures. And these eight spheres are very, very um, universal. The energies of these are universal across all traditions. I see it in, in Kabbalah. I see it in a bunch of pagan traditions. I see it in Hinduism. And it goes all the way back to Egyptian and Mesopotamian traditions. So it's great to give a basic understanding of some of this. <clears throat> and what's cool about this is it's really for people who are very advanced or very new to some of this. Because what it does is it gives you a uh, meditative and practical um, experience. So if you're really advanced, it'll give you a different viewpoint. If you're not advanced on these topics, but other topics, it'll give you a link. And if you're new to all this, it'll give you a starting point. So where to engage with the eight spheres? So these are on our website, which is at circulusmatrum.com. If you go there, you don't have to um, go to this exact URL. If you go to the course or to the website and click on studies, this page will come up. And the first thing is the cycle one, which is initiate training. Now you don't have to become an initiate by taking this. Um, you can take this completely on your own if you'd like, but the way we have it set up is it's got these nine classes. One is an intro to this tradition um, or this group, and then eight of the spheres. And they go from kingdom, foundation, splendor to supernal. Um, what, it, what it's set up is after you do one of these, you then email me with your insights, what you've seen, and I'll re reply back with any answers to questions, any kind of, um, you know, any kind of insights you've had, I'll respond to that. Um, and then you go on to the next one. Now, if you don't want to interact with us, that's okay. You can take these just on your own. Uh, but it does really help to have that interaction, I think, because it gives you a sounding board. 
We also can offer um, sometimes somebody to work with you on these if you want. I know Richard does that with some people. I've done it with some people. So we can um, also um, work with you as you go through each one of these. They do grow. So the intro is really an intro to this group and some basics. And then as you get into each sphere, sphere one being kingdom is very close to our, our world and much more closer to what we experience as humans. As we move up, it will build. Each one will build on the previous. For instance, the meditations get a little more complex. The ritual stuff starts out with basic ritual tools all the way up to doing a ritual. So it is a progression. After this, I don't have it on the screen, but there are other training we have, again, for free. Um, we do have a Kabbalah class. Um, it's also on YouTube where you can take it there, which does use all the Hebrew and it does go into all the details. Um, but this is a great starting point if you don't want to learn Hebrew right off the bat to do this. Um, if you are interested in reading more, um, I you know, again, shameless plug here, but I have written two books so far, one called Embracing Lilith, which is history and experiential stuff with Lilith, plus a um, a study of um, her mythology put into a a story, um, one, one specific story. And then the second book is called Embodying Lilith, a Gnostic Kabbalah of Lilith. And it is Kabbalah. You will learn Kabbalah, both the spheres and the paths of Kabbalah, plus the Cliff Hoth by going through that book. And each one of them ties to Lilith. So if you have an interest in her, um, that book will help you not only understand the, the spheres um, and the paths of Kabbalah, but also how Lilith can, can link to those. Um, if you're new to Kabbalah, I would start with this course and then read that book. It's a little bit dense because there's a lot of information. Um, but I try to put as much English with just Hebrew words in parentheses. And I do that because if I, if I don't give you the Hebrew word somewhere, if you go try to read something else, I haven't done you justice because you won't be able to find any information because you won't know the words. So we do that in the advanced class here and also in my book. I am working on a third book right now, which will be her um, Lilith again, of course, but from the standpoint of the Sumerian Ladder of Lights and her Mesopotamian origins. So that's not out yet, but that will um, be coming as well. So how does it work? So as I said, you can study the spheres without interacting with them, um, without interacting with us. You can do it as a personal study. You can officially take the course um, in between each sphere. You email me. Um, I respond, respond back with answers to questions and clarifications. At the end, you do get a certificate if you've worked through it with me, or if you work with it through Richard, he'll send me a, an email and I'll send you a certificate too. And after completion, you can also ask to be an initiate of the circle, and we can do a, um, a, a distance, if you're not near either Richard or I, a distance um, initiation into the group. And you'll know more about what the group is about when you do the intro to the group in the, the study. I think that's all I have in the way of slides. Um, we can pull up, um, let me stop share, but let me pull up the course. And let me share again. Actually, not that. Okay, so hopefully you can see the screen and it's a, um, it's the, page with the studies. And as you see, it has the intro to the Circle of Dark Mother. It has the different spheres. And then we have the ADAPT training, which you can go to at any point. You don't have to get approval or anything. But it has information on Gnosticism, meditation, building an altar, Wheel of the Year, which is from a um, pagan perspective, uh, Kabbalah study guide, stuff about chakras and Kundalini, tarot and Hebrew letters, uh, intro to pagan rituals, how to perform the Kabbalistic cross, inter to Kabbalistic ritual, 
and intro to the ESBIT practices. So we have a bunch of different things on there. And then in the under explorations, there's even more things you can go explore. Um, and then of course, there's the YouTube channel where we have a bunch of videos on stuff. So those are the eight spheres. I'll see if I can bring one up and see if it'll share that. I'll probably have to Okay, can you see sphere one? I can. Okay, cool. So it comes up as a PDF so that it's quick to come up and it's not large. And it does then go through, all of them have what are the spheres. So if you jump in in the middle, you're not caught off guard. It des it describes the sphere. It talks about the um, links to it, personalities and deity and all these different things. We I, I intersperse pictures just because it keeps it interesting. Um, you can print this out if you want to and study it that way, or you can do it online. Richard, is there anything you want to share at this point? Or Richard, you're on mute if you're talking. Oh. Absolutely. I, I would, I would love to share a few things. Okay. Um, so what, what we have here um, is a workbook material. Um, and what I mean by that, um, there's, as he shared, you know, there, there's a series of um, workout materials, there's recipes, formulas, correspondences, um, things that involve um, an engaged system. So, so these are practical applications. It's not this reading about magic. It's the applications mm -hmm. of building and doing things for yourself interactively. Um, so it, it is a way for you to tap into Kabbalah um, without having to join uh, an initiation or join a lodge or um, devote yourself to one particular practice. The, the interesting thing about this is that um, it's so extensive from so many different types of backgrounds that you kind of plug in the way that you deem fit. Mm -hmm. um, I understand from my experience with this, having the hands-on um, with a person makes the world of difference because then you're actually engaging with something that, that does have initiation after, after completion of so desired. Um, to actually be part of a group set or or something that um, can get you further ahead in your in your progress because to to me this material is accessible to have some sense of foundation if you're looking for that um, to where you can tap in and figure out what avenues you want to explore um, to kind of expand upon either your own understanding now or something you might not have had the experience before. Um, so having, having the interaction amongst the, the people that have been initiated into the group, um, I find it extremely beneficial. Um, and it's because obviously, cause I'm here and, and two, I keep coming back and, and why is because, um, I found good positive results, um, from the, from the material. Um, I spent a year and a year and a day, um, working with Mark. And uh, I think that this material is is pretty sound. You know, I've been part of different groups. I'm part of different traditions um, outside of this group. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's it's great. And, and I do want to add to what Richard said. Great, great um, description, Richard. I do want to add that when people do, um, if somebody does decide to initiate into our group, we are not asking for you to um, give up anything else. So if somebody does decide that they would like to become part of this group, we do not stop you. You know, we're not saying get rid of anything else you're doing. And in fact, we, even though we have a framework of ideas in Circle of the Dark Mother, which is rooted in Kabbalah, ritual magic, paganism, Gnosticism, um, some of the people in our group do conjure. So it's a little bit of everything, um, bright and dark sides of stuff. Um, we are not looking for this to be an exclusive thing. In fact, we want people to bring their own experience, their own path, their own working to this group so that we can share all these different things we do. So anything that we teach is not meant to be 
this is it. This is the right way. This is the only way. It's meant to be a way, like these spheres are meant to be a way to look at these ideas in a common sort of framework so that we can talk, um, you know, in a common language. So never, never feel like anything we're doing is saying this is the only way or, you know, you have to give up anything else you're doing. In fact, I think that's totally contrary to what we do. In fact, people just add based on our group instead of getting rid of anything else. Um, and people are as, as um, you know, busy in the group as they want or not. Um, we have people like Richard who helps teach, um, helps make decisions about what we're going to do. We have other people that basically just consume the material because they got their own strong practice and and they just want this as an add-on. So totally open to whatever um, anybody is interested in. We're more of a clearinghouse and a a brother and sisterhood or a um, siblinghood, I guess is a good way to put it, instead of a a some you know secret society where this is all you can do. So just wanted to throw that in. So this course does not talk specifically about Lilith, although if you've read my books or looked at some of the um, YouTube stuff, I do tie Lilith into each of the spheres. So you very easily can read this material, go look at some of the other stuff we have if you're a Lilith person, because I know that's where some people have come into this group. Um, there's always going to be Lilith content because that's my my base. So I guess at this point, any questions or comments, anything anyone would like to discuss and open to anything? I'll let other people ask questions first and then I'll, I'll make some, some comments and uh, add in a few things. If anybody ever wants to contact me or, or Mark, we're easy to get a hold of. Um, easily found on uh, Facebook, Facebook Messenger, Instagram, those kinds of things where you can find me. Um, and Mark is a pretty easy guy to get a hold of. My email's all over these the website, so you can find me really easy. Uh, plus, as I said, our YouTube channel as well. And no requirement of questions, just giving you an opportunity if you have any. Okay, Richard, over to you for anything else, if you have anything else you wanted to say. Sure. Um, so being an interactive person with the group, um, I've seen a lot of different people from a, a lot of different walks of life um, that, that come to the circle of the Dark Mother. Um, when we were live, interactive, in person um, at Witch Lab, um, we, we had a, a, a fairly decent sized group um, that, that was interactive. Um, some have come, some have gone, some have contributed, um, added in. And I'm um, just hopeful if you want to explore this, that, you know, we, we are saying we are available for you if that's something that, that you want to do. Um, you didn't show up late, whoever that was. Kaziah. Okay. Yeah, you're, uh, you're right on time. Thanks for showing up. Yeah, no problem. We're, we're ta we were talking about the eight spheres, which is a, uh, which is course material uh, free um, on our website. Let me go back to studies, um, Circulus Matrum, um, which I put in the chat. And we're talking about this part, which is eight spheres, which plus an intro, which ties into Kabbalah, but we don't use the Kabbalistic terms in this because we want to give people the opportunity to learn the ideas without having to dive into uh, Hebrew. And it links to a whole bunch of other stuff. This is our vehicle too for people to request initiation when they go through these so that they have the ability to speak in the same language as us, even though um, no matter what they're doing as their private practice, it doesn't, doesn't matter. We're in it for all spirituality. So that's what we've been talking about. I did want to bring up the YouTube channel. I know it has my name on it because it's my personal YouTube account, 
but as you can see by the banner, it is Circle the Dark Mother. Um, and a lot of the content is me because I post um, twice a week. Um, but we do have guest speakers. We have people from the, the meetings. Um, I have other people wanting to, to post sometimes. So there are a lot of topics here. And what you're seeing is the non-member and the member videos. Um, I only do membership um, in case people want to go deeper. And it's 99 cents a month for anybody who wants to do that. But really what the membership gets people on this is pre-viewing of some of the um, videos that I'm going to put out anyway. And then some little snippet ones like... Um, this one, I showed some of my crystals to the membership, which I didn't put on the main channel. But we do have the light, Ladder of Lights. Um, we do have a bunch on Lilith because that's where I work. Um, this was our last meeting, which is about Mesopotamian witchcraft and ritual. Um, I did want to put, and it's back a ways. There's stuff about my books. We did have a meeting where... Um, 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 Oberon Zell came and spoke, um, Richard spoke at times, but I wanted to show if I can find it cause it's way back. Oh, here intro to Gnostic Kabbalah. So if you get into the spheres and want to go deeper, I do have a whole video that lays out, um, the Kabbalah side of the spheres where the ladder of lights lays out the Mesopotamian side of the spheres. So we do have much you know, more in-depth, deep dives as well. But the class is a really good place to start to get your bearings and, um, you know, get get on the same page. And and as I said, even if you're a seasoned Kabbalist, um, it'll give you a different perspective. So I think I, I think, I don't think I have anything else to say. Any other questions or Richard, anything else you wanted to say? Sure. Um, you know, if you have any any questions, you can always reach out to me at Richard Crow um, on uh, Facebook. You can reach me on Instagram. Um, I'm very active with Facebook Messenger. That's my my primary contact. Or or you know, hit me up on on Facebook. Let me know that you you have interest. Um, we can set something up. Uh, me or Mark can, you know, go through the spheres with you if you're interested in exploring that and having some exchange uh, of information to go back and forth. Um, you know, been given permission by Mark to um, help people along the way in, in their progress with, with this material, um, exploring it in depth with him and, and with the with the inner circle, um, which was a, an absolute blessing. And I'm glad that I have. Um I also have other services I can provide if you're interested. Just reach back out to me uh, or contact me privately, and I'd be glad to assist you. And uh, whoever sees this, I thank you for taking the time to check this out. And uh, hopefully it affects your path in a positive way or uh, share some ideas with me. You know, we're, we're an open book to discovering Gnosis and uh, having an experiential process and, and the ways we best understand you know, the ways that we connect and the way that we connect to each other. So uh, thank you. Okay, the the last thing I want to say about the meetings, we do totally different topics every, every meeting. Uh, we've done live rituals, we do classes, we have guest speakers. If you have anything you'd like to see us do for a, a session, shoot either me an email or on, on Facebook or contact Richard. Um, we won't do something we don't know anything about. We're not going to just make stuff up, but we will seek somebody who does know something about it to speak, or if we do, we'll speak. If you have interest in speaking, you know, reach out to us. Uh, we can talk about what you're interested in. We can talk about, you know, what you want to talk about. We'll include it in a, a monthly meeting and it'll end up on YouTube. Uh, so just wanted to get, put that out there that we're very open and want to explore as many areas of spirituality as we can. Okay, that's all I've got. If anybody has any questions, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, stop the recording just in case anybody doesn't want to ask a question on the recording. So let me do that. Well, that's interesting. 
Ah, there we go.